think about seeing it, you know, and not knowing how, what goes into making it. But I, I, I like it as an actor now. So I um, yeah. actually just got finished doing another one, another horror called Six, Six Degrees of Hell, um, which Corey Feldman is in. Um, and uh, I, I'm not the killer in that one, but that, that, that was a fun one, too. Yeah, we were uh, – uh, I, can't, I can't remember which which episode of the podcast it was, but we were, uh, we're actually trying to get <laughs> Corey Feldman on the show. Uh, oh yeah, he had he had I think it was some movie he was in that actually got submitted to the the film festival. We didn't we didn't show it, but uh, yeah, we we were really trying to get him on. Uh, so uh, now that you've done you know horror, is that does that tend to be the stuff that you're getting offered now? Since you know you well, to... yeah, not really. I mean, to be honest with you, Joe, the, there's not like a whole lot of offers. You know, there's just there's really not a whole lot of film happening right now yeah. um at least that that i know of i mean usually the roles that i get offered is like several production teams that i've been involved with will be like hey we got something coming up in a few months you want to come out and and read for this role and that's usually how i get stuff there's not a whole lot of like you know and i have an agent here in, in philly but philly's such a commercial town that you know she sends me on voiceover and commercial auditions but very rarely are there actual film auditions that go through um, casting directors and agencies. So so not a whole lot of offers coming through. Um, and I, I don't know. I think there might be a horror film or two in the works with a couple of the production teams I've been involved in, but I don't think it's specifically a genre that people are thinking about me for. I actually think that I, I do a wide range of things, and, and what people are writing around here is a wide range of things. So if it comes along that, that, that they have another project they want me to read for, I'll do it, kind of no matter what genre it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, I mean, when I was looking at your, uh, like, at your uh, IMDb page, uh, you do kind of have, like, I guess this is, I mean, don't take this the wrong way, because this is definitely a compliment, but you definitely have that look of, like, a like a great character actor. Like, you have that kind of look to where, where, you know, you could see you playing a homeless guy, but then you could almost, you know, see you playing, you know, like a father or uh, like, you know, like some of your pictures make it almost look like you're, you know, in like a 1970s, like heist film or something. <laughs> so, like, yeah, yeah. You, you saw that one. Yeah. There, yeah. There's a movie I, I did called uh, Kodachrome, which is actually a fun project, which I, I don't know if you know about Kodachrome film, but um, they, they, there was only one processing plant left last year that still processed Kodachrome and then it shut down. So the, so Kodachrome is no more. Um, and so this guy named Harry Walker made a film called Kodachrome kind of about the end of things. So it was kind of cool that he shot completely on Kodachrome. And um, it was a series of vignettes and I was in the vignette that was um, supposed to be about the 70s. So I was kind of dressed in 70s garb and I had that, that mustache and the longer hair. And uh, that, was, that was really fun. It was really fun to kind of dress like that and to Get to drive an opal. <laughs> Did you see that the old yellow opal? Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, that was fun. And you know, yeah, I mean, I I am a character actor. That's what I do. I don't. It was funny. I was taking an acting class, I guess maybe seven years ago now, eight years ago. And at the end of the class, the teacher said she was saying something about that she she liked my work. And then she said, and, and of course, you know, you're a character actor. You're not a lead actor. Yeah. And it was the first time I'd ever heard that. I was like, what? I don't even know what you're talking about. What, is, what does that mean? And I kind of asked around, and, and I realized basically what she was saying was, you're not good-looking enough to ever play the lead. <laughs> 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 but <laughs> you have enough skill that you'll be able to do these other things. And it kind of hit me hard at first until I, I thought about it and realized, you know what? She's right. That's that's the way this business works, you know. Um, and, and once I could kind of realize that and settle myself with that fact, it was like, all right, well, th this is what I do then. Um, and it's actually, it's probably a lot more fun because, you know, if, yeah. if, you're, if you're the lead actor, people only ever picture you as that kind of one role. Um, whereas yeah. if you get to be the character actor and you get to, to grow facial hair, which is some people say that all my talent lies in my facial hair, uh, great beard. Great yeah, right. Beard. 
then then I get to do a variety of things that are that are all really fun. I can do comedic, I can do horror, I can do serious, you know. So. Well, yeah, I mean, because I mean, when you think of like the great, the great actors, they're not, you know, there's a few leading men that are, you know, considered like some of the great actors, but. You know, even Johnny Depp, even though he's like, you know, a leading man, he definitely is like a character actor, and like, you know, like Robert De Niro, and uh, you know, like, uh, you know, like Christian Bale, yeah, Daniel yeah. Day Lewis, yeah. Oh, Daniel yeah. Day Lewis. Oh, that's another great beard. What yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, did you did you see the pictures of him as Lincoln? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Just that, like just knowing that like somebody on the face of the planet is like living. Because he's he's like one of those uh, what do they call it like where like when he's when he's in a role like he lives as that person yeah like, yeah he's yeah like, been, <laughs> like living in a tent like yeah. a little wood cabin and stuff like that <laughs> just knowing that somebody is living as Abraham Lincoln in the year 2011 just I don't know just makes me happy I love but, it uh, I love it I totally love that guy uh, yeah yeah those guys are awesome Sean Penn I, yeah. I mean those, those guys are just they're awesome man and I would love to. Uh, I would just, you know, I don't even care about the money that much. I'd just love to get enough to pay my bills, and yeah. I would love to just get to do that. You know, if my, if I, if I could make thirty thousand a year, you know, and get to just make movies all the time, I'd be totally happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that that would yeah, be great. Exactly. At least, at least for a while. Well, that's what I was. That's what I was kind of asking about. Like, uh, you know, do you see like more like horror stuff coming in? Because I know. Like it, it's definitely a, a story that you hear sometimes of you know I guess uh, I guess the perfect example would be like maybe like Robert England or something who you have right. somebody who was kind of a character actor and then he does this one you know kind of a horror movie and he gets automatically locked into you know he's the horror guy or kind of right like right right that right one, that one character so uh, it's, it's, it's kind of nice to know that you're not you know. That maybe hopefully you haven't gotten <laughs> locked into just doing horror. So yeah, yeah, no, not yet anyway. But you know what? I I, I think about that every once in a while, and I think about because actually when I did the role as the homeless guy with the beard, and I was walking around with that beard for a couple months, it really it, it attracted attention in a particular way. Like I got auditions for kind of weird commercials and this and that. And I thought, wow, you know, like this, this could really be my thing, you know. Yeah. You d- you decide on a look, and then you just kind of audition for everything that has to do with that look, and you kind of create your own niche market. and And, and I'm I'm glad that I that I'm not doing that, but you can also see the benefits of that. You can see yeah. where there people think about okay, a guy with a beard. Okay, we'll call Brian in. Um, I I you know I it's not like I would say no. Like you know if I was walking around with a particular look, whatever it was, and people said. Oh yeah, we we want that guy, and he's going to be our our horror guy. Um, yeah. And I ended up kind of getting paid decently, and, and got to make a bunch of stuff. I I probably wouldn't mind doing that for a few years, um, as long as it didn't ruin my long term chances of doing a variety of different things. Yeah, um, well, I mean, it's kind but, of like uh, like like Zach Galifianakis. I mean, there's yeah. there's you know certain people out there that when you think of them. Like, you know, there are, I mean, it kind of sounds like horrible to say, but there are some people out there that they're, you know, it kind of seemingly seems like, you know, their their power lies with their, <laughs> their facial hair. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, when you yeah, see somebody yeah. with a great beard, it, it just kind of, you know, sinks into your soul. Yeah, it really does. And then the question is, like, are, are they deciding that, okay, this is just their look and that's what they're doing, or basically has the industry decided that, like, you know, you're going to keep getting jobs if you keep looking like that. So don't shave it. You know, who, who knows if, if it's their publicist and, and manager telling them to keep it or if they actually just want to keep it because of the look. Yeah, no, another guy actually who, who kind of his beard was his signature was um, Ryan Dunn. Oh, yeah, Rest yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we actually got to work with him on a couple of projects. Really, really great guy. That was really a, a tragedy. Yeah, me and um, uh, – uh, I don't know if we did it actually on the podcast, but I remember – I talked to uh, I talked to Jason, you know, like on the phone before we did it. We were talking about like, you know, Ryan, because I guess uh, Jason uh, is also a mu- mu- uh, musician. 
and I didn't I didn't know that, but apparently I guess he had you know gotten to work with him a couple times like on some uh, music or something like that. Yeah, I know Jay. I I didn't know if Jay himself was a musician. He might be for all I know, but I know he's buddies with um, the CKY guys. Yeah. Um, and uh, has been actually I think he might have just filmed a video with them. Um, and some of their music isn't down the road too, so I know he was connected to them that way. Yeah. And then uh, uh, Ryan was in uh, the film Booted. He played a really funny role as this health inspector. And then he was also in a, a drama called Close Up, directed by by Jose Cruz, which was also well, really was, good. And uh, it was in some movie. Uh, God, I can't remember what it was called, but like yeah, I remember it came out right. I think it was like almost right during the week that he died. Uh, yeah. Well, like came out, but it was like he was a ghost. Yeah, li- Living Will. That was actually. Yeah, that, Written by um, Roy, uh, what, the the uh, co-producer or the the what am I? What's the word I'm thinking of? He, he's the partner with uh, Joe Hennigan. Those guys run KFAT. Um, oh, so so Roy wrote it and they they got done to star in it and then um, directed I think by a guy named Matt Lawyer. And um, yeah, that that was released right after he died. I think it was actually set for release literally kind of right around the time he died, and then I think it, it had to get pushed back a few weeks because of it. But, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, this, this kind of horrible tragedy, but also, you know, he, this guy's got this incredible body of work that he just started doing. Like, he wanted to be a serious actor, and, and he was great. I mean, he could do this this, this wide range of roles. Um, and uh, so it, it's it's a total tragedy, and I just hope that, I hope that all of his work gets out there for people to see because he was really good. Well, his, uh, uh, his TV show on uh, G4 was actually pretty good. Uh, it was kind of like a like a like it was kind of like a almost kind of like a mix of like a reality show and like kind of like Mythbusters esque or something. Yeah, uh, you know what? I good. think I saw a couple clips, but I never saw the full thing. I just kind of heard about it. Yeah, it was kind of like a kind of a geeky. Yeah, I remember, like, okay. they, like they, you know, would make like homemade weapons and stuff like that, and like, oh, okay. kind of, like shoot them at each other. But, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah. yeah, like you're talking about your beard. I think probably my favorite, uh, probably my favorite line in the movie is like where that guy like turns around and he just like the first thing he says, he just sees you like standing there, like, <laughs> like everybody's like, he's like, well, that's a great beard. <laughs> I, I actually think that that's my favorite line in the movie, and that's. uh that's Chris Reddy, who that guy is just hysterical. Yeah, and, that, uh, guy, that guy's cool movie. <laughs> yeah, he is he is awesome. Actually, it, when we first did that scene, we were playing around with kind of a whole bunch of different lines. Like he 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 would just keep babbling. You know, he would just yeah. like say all kinds of weird stuff, and it was hysterical. We we were cracking each other up, and and the whole <laughs> the whole cast and crew. Um, and then we just Jay was like, "All right, that's all really funny, but." We, we can't do that. It's the first kill. We got to make it quick. So you, you can only say one line. And he's like, "I know what I'm going to say." <laughs> and he turns around and goes, "That's a spectacular beard." <laughs> so it was like an improvised line. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He that dude is hysterical. My my one regret about the film is that he was the first kill. I would have loved to have seen him, you know, throughout. You know, just making little cracks and stuff, but. You know. Yeah, it would have been awesome if he would have like you know just like survived the whole thing, just kind of like you know kind of like, like kind of oblivious <laughs> to the whole thing the whole time yeah, yeah, and just kind of accidentally yeah. survived. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. Cause he was he was. I, I know one of the the you know the, a lot of the things that worked about uh, down the road, especially for me, because the story it, it is kind of very formulaic in that you know classic kind of like 1980s, you know, kind of horror, uh, you know, plot line of, you know, kids going in the woods and there's, you know, a killer in the woods and, you know, but uh, like one of the things that worked the most for me was, uh, you know, it was very, very funny, especially, you know, just, you know, because of that guy. Yeah, you know, yeah. There, you know, there was, you know, to that whole first, I don't know, like probably, you know, first 20 minutes, like there is a, a couple like really good laughs just because of that dude. <laughs> Like, yeah, 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 and I think I think they knew when they hired him to play it that that he was funny, but I I don't think that they knew kind of what a comic genius and an improv genius that he was, and so I think everyone was thinking after he got killed, like, oh damn, it's a shame he has to be killed because he's awesome. So 
but yeah, I think he he really he really made the the movie into uh, he expanded it. You know what I mean? From from just pure horror into something where you can kind of also relieve tension with like a couple good laughs. And I actually think that that makes horrors even better. Oh yeah, that's that's why that's one of the reasons why I loved uh, Down the Road on Watch it. But also uh, because of you, because I think you kind of did the same thing. Whereas you know you weren't just a uh, you know even though you didn't really see your face for you know a lot of the movie because it seemed like whenever you were actually you know kind of killing people they never really showed your face. Uh, right. But at the same time, you actually did have a character, and you just weren't some you know like crazy dude out in the woods. You know, wearing a high, hockey mask, you actually had right, you know, right, exactly, and, and that that comes down to you know uh, Jay's script, which I, I think was really great, and that he he decided early on that he didn't want this guy just to be a slasher, that he wanted he wanted people to know the reason behind what this guy was doing, and to to give this guy a heart, so that he even said you know halfway through the movie, once this guy kind of gives his speech, like. A lot of people end up rooting for the killer, yeah. um, which is which is kind of cool, you know. And I think that that goes to to um, how well he wrote the.